There's a pretty one, Ulysses. There it is. Hello, Booktube. I'm Sean the Bookman. Yeah, welcome back to my channel. Here I am with another Friday Reads. I tried to set it up out on my balcony, but the lighting was just not working there. So I thought, what a novel idea. Let's just open the curtains in the bedroom and I'll stand here in front of the one solid white space that uh, doesn't have a bunch of junk that you can see. And I'll do it inside in the sunlight. Let's see how it goes. The other thing I want to say before I get into my, it's going to be a rather long Friday Reads because I've had a pretty amazing reading week, for better and for worse, but lots to tell you about, is I was walking back. I went out for a walk and did some audiobook listening and some reading and a breakfast cafe and blah, blah, blah. And Kenji slept in. And when I was coming back just before lunchtime, I was walking down the street, getting closer to my house and looking at this cute guy and that cute guy and... I cruised my husband. I didn't recognize him. He was dressed in a suit, and I was like, oh, look at that guy. Oh, look at that guy. Oh, hello, Kenji. <laughs> I said, I just cruised you. <laughs> so, that was a happy, happy encounter. And I blew him an air kiss, and he went off to work, and here I am. So, yes, I have finished a whole bunch, bailed on a couple, started a whole bunch, Got a lot coming up on next week's TBR, so let's get started. Whew. So I finished the books that I had started last week. I finished all my Victober stuff, so let me tell you about that first. Not only Victober. So I finished Dodo, the E.F. Benson novel from 1893, and it actually kind of redeemed itself by the end. The middle was really weak because he tried to give the story a serious turn. So basically, Dodo is the main character of this novel, and she is flighty and witty and gabby and hilarious and superficial, adorable and popular, socialite. And in the middle, she is made to undergo some tragedies that she doesn't deal well with. And it just, the, the, the jarring shift in tone, I mean, I think he was trying to prove a point, and it was probably, it was a really, uh, sensa it caused a, a real sensation in literary London when it was published, but it didn't really work. Then in the latter third of the novel, all of this, the gaiety and wit came back, and you, you could kind of forget about the morose middle. <laughs> so I gave it four stars. It entertained me more than it more than anything else there are several more in the dodo series just for fun i might try one, another one or two but it was mostly interesting as a way of understanding the genesis for the marvelously realized character lucia in the map and lucia series of novels that he penned uh, 40 years later Unfortunately, The Lifted Veil by George Eliot didn't get any better, so this was a two-star read. This was this weird pairing of a novella, The Lifted Veil, which I talked about last week, didn't much care for, with her famous essay, Silly Novels by Lady Novelists, and I reread it. I think I read it as an undergrad or grad student, I don't remember. Reread it as a, this was a buddy read with Curtis of Curtis Books and Books, and we both found the essay as dull as Ditchwater. I mean, maybe there was a point there. She was setting her own fictional enterprise apart and above the silly novels of her day, but who cares? It's the same chick lit debate now. I mean, who cares? People read what they want to read. People write what they want to write. Uh, what's there to argue about? I forgot to hold up the George Eliot book, so here it is. Let's go into the used bookstore. However, much happier story to tell you, I was really negative about Bright Lights, Big City by Jay McInerney, which I was reading because I was doing a project on second person narration, second person point of view. And I really didn't like the first couple chapters. I just thought it was going to be one of those snarky office comedy things like the Emily Natom novella that I fear and trembling that I hated so much. But this one not only redeemed itself, it became more complex and there was a, sh a variety of tones that didn't bump up against each other but really connected up to make a really satisfying novel and I found the ending 
extremely moving. And anything that extremely moves me means that I loved it. So by the end, it was a five star read. My first by Jay McInerney and not my last. And interesting, I have thoughts about his use of the second person point of view. It was all you, you, you. Because my experience of it was very different than I expected it would be. But I'm that second person narration research project is a bit on hold. And I'll get to why in just a moment. But I, I will talk more about it when I eventually do make that video. Okay. As I talked about last week, I did read both of the C.C. Dangaramba novels. The first two in this trilogy, Nervous Conditions, 1988. The Book of Not, 2006, I want to say. Yes, 2006. And I have to say I was very disappointed. And so it makes me really... Mm, I didn't bail on them because I had a, a reason to read them. and <clears throat> But it makes me really lower my expectations for the new one, the third in the trilogy, or maybe there's going to be more after this, I don't know. This Mournable Body just came out this year. So yes, very disappointing. The first one, Nervous Conditions, it just had a lot of first novel flaws. A fairly autobiographical story about Tambu, who is a young Rhodesian, uh, African Rhodesian girl. And this is before Zimbabwe became the, the name of the country. In the dying days of the Rhodesian regime, she lives in a poor town with a poor, very poor family. And it's her coming of age story, particularly the story of her education. It started out really strong. The opening sentence, it certainly gets your attention. I was not sorry when my brother died. And we hear a lot about her brother who died when he was about 13. And about her more well-off highly educated headmaster uncle. His name is difficult to pronounce and uh, it's, it would be almost impossible for me to resist pronouncing it the Japanese way. African names often are quite similar to Japanese names. Baba Mukuru, or Uncle Baba Mukuru. He was Western educated and he was the headmaster of a school and she goes and lives with him and goes to his school and becomes educated and it's a look at the way that a western education advanced her life and the lives of other people in the novel but also colonized them in a way and uh, alienated them from their loved ones but i didn't feel that the characters here really jumped off the page they half jumped they sat up but they didn't stand up <laughs> they didn't jump so i was dissatisfied but it was like eh. And it was really wordy, and I thought, uh, first novel, I have high hopes for the second one. So almost 20 years later, huh? almost 20 years later, 2006, Dangaremba publishes the Book of Nod, the sequel. And I just have to say, this was awful. I couldn't believe how bad it was. It was so much worse than the first one. She went backwards. I'm not going to say much more than that, and I'm going to hold my fire. I thought about doing a kind of a ranty review of these two novels before I started reading This Mournable Body, but no, I'll hold my fire and I'm, I'm f just hoping that This Mournable Body will redeem the other two. But I could forgive a lot in the first one, but this one, there was just a lot of, to me, unforgivable, fatal flaws. This one was just terrible. Oh, and hey, I forgot to say that I have put the second person narration Research project. Research is a little bit <laughs> too, too strong of a word, but yeah, basically research, investigation on hold, because here's why I was doing it. The three volume Dangaremba novels, volume one and volume two, are in first person, and for some reason she switches to second person for volume three, the one that we're going to start buddy reading, This Mormon Body, and I haven't had good luck with second person narration in the past although I had a good experience with, just now, with Jay McInerney, but I was just wondering, why would she change? And so I thought this, I wanted to do kind of a deep dive into the literary theory and the, the writerly, essayistic writings by writers about different points of view, and especially second person, and talk about it as a narrative strategy for C.C. Dangaremba. But now that the first two books are so mediocre, I'm not going to waste my research on This Mournable Body if it's also a bad book. So I'll just 
go in a different direction with that research and the essay that I will make. But that's on hold for now, and that's why. Okay? And just to finally, uh, to, uh, the last uh, book that I read for October was Wives and Daughters, which I did on audio. It was a masterful narration by somebody, Tomlinson. I'll put her name in the show notes because her version of the audio was just amazing. And I finished it uh, just before midnight on the last day of October. And I really enjoyed this novel, but it was a four-star read for me because I didn't love it because I thought that the protagonist, Molly, was a bit prissy and really boring and not enough for it to be a three-star read because there were so many other characters in the book that were really interesting. Her father, her stepmother, and her stepsister really carried the novel, but she was, you know, I felt sometimes she was just being used as a plot device that she needed to be here to overhear this conversation and she just didn't really, she was really quite dull, I thought. And I didn't think it needed to be that long. But uh, I was never bored. Uh, not, uh, even Molly didn't bore me, but I really liked it. And it's my second by Gaskell. I read North and South about five years ago and don't remember much about it, but I really liked it. I would like to read more by her. But this was her last novel and she died before it was finished. So, it, so that the, the last sentence of the novel... I thought was perfect for an ending and then there was a really uh, awful afterward written by somebody to talk about how she wanted the novel to end i i wish i hadn't listened to it because it was so terrible and it ended perfectly you know really kind of a modern way so yeah it was it was good so those are the books that i finished i will tell you now about the books that i've started and i've started a lot because i'm now into uh, novellas in november Nov Nov, uh, that doesn't roll trippingly off my tongue, but I'm using the hashtag Nov Nov. Novel is in November and nonfiction November. So I've started a whole swack of books and bailed on two. I started the Greenland novel that was just published in English yesterday, Crimson by, I believe the pronunciation, just from reading it, I think I know how to pronounce it, Niviak Corneliusen. And that is a, a young queer novelist from Greenland. And this is her queer lesbian novel. And I'm enjoying it. I'm uh, not quite halfway through. It's a couple hundred pages. And it's written in a really unique, the translation. Uh, who's the translator? Anna Halager is the translator. The English translation reads almost like YA, but yet there's something underneath it. Like, I think part of it is that this is in a very different culture. I think if I was reading the same story set in Canada or in the West, I wouldn't be as interested. But I am really interested in the love story and the story of homophobia in Greenland. Quite enjoying it. I have started and am, will finish later today, the Australian novella, The Spare Room by Helen Garner. And this is a buddy read I'm doing and really, really enjoying. My first with Natalie of and her channel name. Natalie's channel is My Reading Dates and she does wonderful vlogs. I'll put her link in the show notes. And we are both loving The Spare Room. It is so Wonderful. It's going to be a five-star. I'll be shocked if it wasn't a five-star read. It's certainly sitting at a five-star read at the 70% mark. And uh, as I think I said in my TBR video, it's about a... It's an auto, It's based on an autobiographical experience. She and I will be doing a joint review, and I will have a lot to say about how wonderfully Garner transforms her own personal experience, alchemizes it into literary fiction in a way that C.C. Dangaremba failed miserably at, and maybe she'll get it by the third one. But just, just loving it. It's about her eponymous protagonist, Helen. She's 65 years old, and she, uh, I think her friend who's dying of cancer, invites herself to come and stay with her in Melbourne for two weeks for to get some alternative therapy treatments. And it's just a heartrending uh, and uh, quite humorous novel. I'm loving the writing. 
And this is the first one that I started for Nonfiction November. I was so happy to show you this gorgeous book last week. Something of his art, Walking to Lubeck with J.S. Bach by Horatio Clare. And now I'm so happy to tell you that 60% of the way through it, maybe, or 56% of the way through it, I'm really enjoying it. He's a wonderful writer, and it's exactly like I described it last week. It's just kind of a travelogue, walk, walk along the route that Bach took from, I've forgotten the name of the town where he was the organist, 200 miles to Lubeck to meet the preeminent organist of the day whose name I have not yet learned to pronounce but I will learn by the time it's time to do a review because I think I will be doing a review of this I'll certainly tell you more about it next week and all Buxitude Buxitude that's why he's going to Lubeck but it's just wonderful so far and I didn't show you the end papers this is for you Heidi look at that and I have started the Literary History of Saskatchewan, Volume 1, edited by my old professor, David Carpenter, and his foreword was wonderful. I think I'll do a review, but he made a fascinating observation about the difference between Alberta fiction and Saskatchewan fiction from the, orid, from the beginning of our literature to now, and compared that to the difference in the politics and culture of those two adjoining provinces and how much more of a realist, quietly realistic tone Saskatchewan fiction takes compared to Alberta fiction. And I thought, I'm a Saskatchewanian and I love realistic fiction. Could it be because I'm from Saskatchewan? <laughs> it was fascinating. So that's just in the introduction. I'm now just starting the uh, opening essay, which is about Cree literature. Fascinating. Yeah, so it's starting off really good. I have started on audio a novella. This one was not in my TBR, I don't think, but I found it on script. So I thought, what the hell? I wanted to get more stuff on audio into my reading this month. The Ponder Heart by Eudora Welty. I loved her... Delta Wedding when I, I think I studied it in grad school and just loved it. It's the only thing I've read by her, I think. And this one, I'm liking it, but I, what I really love is the audio narration, this southern accented audio narrator. She's amazing. I'm not sure about the novella yet. I'm enjoying it. Like, I think it's probably going to be a four-star read, but uh, we'll see. But let me see if I can find her name. Sally Darling. <laughs> Her name is Sally Darling. She's just her accent and her narration is just to die for. So I am uh, almost halfway through it. And because of a bail, which I'll tell you about in a minute, I started two more audiobooks. I only really only should have started one, but I was walking for two hours, kind of walking half of the way home. Like I walked for an hour and then took the train a little ways and then walked another hour and I was drinking. <laughs> alcohol while I was walking and having a grand old time and ended up starting two more audiobooks. One is a Zadie Smith, the Zadie Smith collection of essays, Feel Free, that came out I think just last year. And I have always said that I don't, like, she's not a fiction writer. She has no business writing novels. They're terrible. But people disagree. So you, if you like her stuff, good for you. But I think she's, uh, her fiction is uh, awful. But whenever I hear her interviewed, I realize how smart she is. So I've always wanted to read some of her. I think I've read one essay in, a, in the New Yorker or something once. And I thought, yeah, I want to read more of her nonfiction. So I started it on audio and it's really good. I wish it was narrated by her, but the audio narrator is doing a pretty good job. But I would have rather been hearing her lovely voice. And one that was on my Audible, I quit Audible last year, but I had some books there that I'd forgotten I had. So one is a nonfiction book about English, Words on the Move, Why English Won't and Can't Sit Still by John McWhorter. And he does a podcast that I listen to occasionally on, on language. I've forgotten the name. I'll put it down below and put it in the show notes if I can find it. And uh, I'm enjoying it. I've listened to a third of it already. And you know, why English won't and can't sit still. I, I am now convinced that there's 
some there's a lot of silly things people get their shirt in and out about like literally and stuff like that and language does change you know people had their shirt in and out about using hand as a verb 50 years ago or 100 years ago and now we all do it and nobody cares and that's how english is fascinating the depth to which he takes his analysis in a way that's very entertaining to listen to like his chapter about really versus very versus truly and how really has such a personal association like you would uh, do a double take if you found really in a newspaper headline it just has a really personal emotional association which it has so it has nothing to do with in reality anymore which is how it started out now just a lot of things like i could do a whole in other words on just the words he talked about just really really interesting so those are the books i've started i have had two bales since I started all this stuff yesterday. The first one was for Nonfiction November, The Wander Society by Carrie Smith. I was doing it on audio and it was narrated by her and it was, my, there's only two sentences in my uh, review and the second one is gushy new agey twaddle. It's all about finding yourself and like every new age platitude, it just made me puke, what garbage. And I started a buddy read this morning of the first novella in the two novellas in one volume called Beautiful Mutants. The, the full title of the book is Beautiful Mutants. That's the first novella. And Swallowing Geography. That's the second novella. And I bailed on page 15. We all know, or most of us can agree, most of us think that Deborah Levy's a pretty damn good writer now. Well, this book did not deserve to be published. It should have stayed in her desk drawer. Beautiful Mutants, it was just supposed to be surrealistic. Uh, it was just stupid. It's like, who was on acid here? The characters all seemed like they were on acid. I think maybe Deborah Levy was when she wrote it, but it was not the kind of trip that creates anything worth publishing. Oh my God, it was terrible. So, I'm not going to try the second one. I will try later levy but early levy best passed over so that's what's been going on and a bunch of stuff that i'm going to be starting tomorrow i'm going to start a two-day buddy read of this book the lady who liked clean restrooms by jp don levy don levy don levy with heidi of my reading life looking forward to that sunday Eric Carl Anderson, Britta Bowler, and I will be starting This Mournable Body by T.C. Dangaramba. I've talked about this already in this video. Fingers crossed. Keep an open mind, Sean. Be optimistic. Hope for the best. Monday, Doris of Aldi Books and I will begin a month-long or four-week buddy read of the Zora Neale Hurston biography. It's called Wrapped in Rainbows, The Life of Zora Neale Hurston by Valerie Boyd. Really looking forward to that. I will probably start at least one more novella over the next few days too because I haven't replaced the one I bailed on earlier today and I'm going to be finishing another one later today so yeah there'll probably be at least one maybe two novellas that I'll start and maybe finish over the coming week too so it's going to be fabulous week that's what's going on for me how about you what's up reading wise or otherwise thanks for watching